Welcome back to English Classes Online. My name is Benjamin. In today's video, we are going to look at comprehension in the Junior School Certificate Examination English, uh, of course, which also is known as the Basic Education Certificate Examination. Our focus is on a revision of the comprehension questions from 2019 to 2021. If you are new to this channel, kindly subscribe to the by clicking the subscribe button below. Make sure you click on the bell icon as well so that whenever I upload a new video on the channel, you will be notified instantly. Without much ado, let's dive into the lesson. Now, are the key steps to take uh, and this is exactly how to answer comprehension questions. Number one, you read the questions, all right? Now, I always advise my students uh, to read the question first because whenever you read the question first, you immediately uh, have an overview of what the passage is about, even without reading a line of that passage. And that means you are equipped with the knowledge of the passage before reading it. Number two, you already know what you are going to look for in the passage, because having read the question, you are already going to look for the answer the moment you start reading. And that positions you to use a very, very important reading technique that we call scanning. When you scan, it means you look for the specific piece of information required for answering the question. And that, of course, simplifies the process for you. And it facilitates your understanding of the whole passage. Now, having read the question, you unpack the question. Now, once you read the question, you will pick the key words from the question. This is very important. Now, what will be helping you to actually look for the answer is the key words, okay? So you are going to be looking for one thing and one thing alone, and that is the key words, all right? Keywords. All right. So now, once you read the question, then the, the you pick the keywords contained in the question, and that actually makes it very clear for you. Now, the keywords from the question will be the key you are going to use to unlock the passage. Because as you read the passage, you are looking for those keywords in the question. And once you, you, you get to them, then you know that you are, you, you get clear, uh, you get nearer to the, to the answers. Now, these keywords are what we call your context clues. All right, so the keywords from the questions you have read will serve as clues, context clues, so that as you start reading the, the passage or the text, then those are the context clues you shall be looking for because the passage or the text contains the uh, keywords or words that are similar to what the questions contain. And so you can, the link becomes clear and that makes reading easy. Now, having said this, the next thing you are going to do is to read the text. That is the passage. And as you start reading the passage, what you will be uh, actually, reading with a purpose. You already have the information you are looking for. And once you get to any specific piece of information that contains the keywords from the questions, they will serve as context clues, so you underline them. Then the number four, you read again for evidence and techniques, all right? Now, I, I always uh, recommend that you read the question again to be sure 
then go back to the passage and start looking for the answer. And step number five is just to write the answer. In the case of the junior school certificate examination, you choose the answer because you have options. The comprehension questions come in objective form, and that actually makes uh, answering uh, questions in this exam very, very easy. Now, at this juncture, we shall be going to the various questions starting from 2019. We shall be looking at comprehension questions from 2019 to 2021. Let's get started right away. Now, we are going to look at a passage, a comprehension passage, and the questions that follow in the Lagos State Basic Education Certificate Examination of 2019, uh, English Studies, Section A, Objective. Of course, you know that at the junior school uh, certificate level, especially in the Lagos State Basic Education Certificate Examination, uh, comprehension questions are part of the objective test questions. And uh, so we want to look at it, all right? So let's look at it, comprehension. The instruction is as follows. Read this passage carefully and answer the questions below it. Now, what I explained to my students, if you are really interested in capturing this simple procedure, is for you to read the question first, all right? Read the question first. Uh, let me try to give you uh, a kind of uh, mnemonic that I have, uh, I have devised, all right? All right? R stands for reading, Q stands for question, P stands for passage, Q stands for question again, S stands for scan, and A stands for answer. Now, what this means is that it's a simple procedure. Read the question. You see, R, all right, if we like, we can put all this in brackets, all right? We can put all this in brackets, but there's no need doing that. We are not solving a mathematical problem. Now read the question, then read the passage. After you have read the passage, then read the question. And as you read the question, you go back to the passage to scan. To scan means to look for the specific uh, piece of information that will help you to answer that uh, question, and then you answer. So read question, passage, question, scan, answer, you know? So read the question, read the passage, read the question again, then go back to the passage and scan the passage. And as you, you get the specific piece of information you are looking for, then you, you, you answer the question. It's a very simple procedure, all right? So let's head to the question right away. Let's undo this, all right? Okay, so let's head to the question and I will show you uh, the benefits. Now, these are the questions. According to the passage, all Spartan boys were trained to become A, great scientists, B, great builders, C, great soldiers, D, great students. Now, having read this question A, we already know that the passage has something to do with Spartan and then Spartan boys, all right? And they are training. So we, we, this already informs us, even before we start reading the passage, that we are going to look for a piece of information that tells us what all, all Spartan boys we are trained to become. So we register it in our mind. Now, question number two, what happened to all the babies born weak? You know, 
babies who were born weak, something happened to them. And the passage is about this. So what reading the questions first does is that it already familiarizes you with the passage even before you start reading it. You already have key information about the passage. And these are pieces of information that really matter because the, the, you have no business with any other thing than the questions you want to answer. So this reading the question first makes you to adopt a business-like approach to answering comprehension questions. You don't want to waste your time. You just want to be precise, be accurate, all right? Okay, so let's look at the options. What happened to all the babies born weak? A, they were nursed outside the city. The passage will tell us. They were referred to hospital. They were trained to survive. They were left to die. So we already have this. We are looking for this already, you know, act activates something in our mind. It gives us a picture of what we are going to look for in the passage. So we don't just waste our time reading, all right? So then number three, Spartan boys did not study this subject at school. So we now know there was a subject they didn't study at school. And <laughs> what was the subject? A, fighting, we will find out. B, uh, mathematics. We will find out seriously the uh, spear throwing. So you see, we already know that the Spartan boys at school, there was a, a particular subject they, they did not study. So we, we, are, we are curious, we want to find out this, but already at the, at the point of reading the questions, we are already loaded, all right? Okay, then number four, why we are Spartan boys giving little food? We again discovered that we are little, giving little food. Why? You know, we are curious at this point. Why were they giving little food? These are things we want to find out as we read the passage. So reading the questions first already, you know, uh, raises, uh, it creates curiosity in you. So as you, before you start reading the passage, you're already hungry for, for certain pieces of information. So as you start reading, you are not just a, a, a lazy or passive reader. You are an active reader because you are already looking for something that, is, that you need to answer specific questions, all right? And once you spot the, the specific piece of information, you underline it or you identify it in your own way and you already know the answer. So it, it says time. Business-like approach, all right? Then we look at the, the options. Option A, to make them agile and strong, we shall find out. To make them hungry and weak. Why were they giving little food? We are curious, we want to find out. C, to make them proud soldiers. Is that? D, to make them tough, all right? We shall know. Question number five, why we are uh, Spartan boys severely punished when caught stealing, you know, something was missing there, but I know it's, it's a verb. Why we are Spart uh, Spartan boys severely punished when caught stealing? So when they were caught stealing, they were severely punished. Why? A, eh? because stealing was a sin. Well, morally, that may be a correct answer, but you never can tell. You, we are told not to just settle for an, an answer because it is uh, ethically or morally correct, or it corresponds to our background knowledge. No, we are going to look for evidence in the passage. B, because they were well fed, well, we will find out, because they were not hungry. D, because they were not careful. So now that we know or we have you know, read the questions first, we now go to the passage. I want you now to watch as we start reading the passage, how we begin to get answers to the questions we have already read. All right, it makes it easy. Now the instruction, once again, read this passage carefully and answer the questions below it. Sparta is a small city in Greece. 
In the olden days, the Spartans were noted for their great strength. Every Spartan boy was trained to become a great soldier. You, can't you see it? We were asked, you know, what were the Spartan boys trained to become? Were they trained to become scientists? No. Already the passage tells us here that we are trained to become great soldiers. So we already have an uh, answer to our question, the question number one. Now, all works in the city were done by slaves who worked in the farms and homes. Slaves grew, uh, grew crops, fetched firewood and water, cooked food, built houses, and did all types of work. Okay? The Spartans were well trained to become very strong and tough. They were trained to fight and win battles against their enemies. Every boy had to become a soldier when he grew up. So you see, we have gotten the answer to our first question. Babies born weak and unhealthy were taken out of the city and left to die. Answer to our second, so one of the other questions, you know, babies born weak, we are left to die. That's the option is here in the passage. We already know it because we read the questions first. So we don't waste our time. Spartan children did not stay long with their parents. At seven years of age, they left home and went to school where they were trained to become good soldiers. They stayed there until they were old enough to take part in wars, all right? Spartan schools were quite different from conventional schools. The boys were not taught mathematics, C, science and other subjects studied today. So mathematics is one of the options, you know. We were told to pick uh, the, any, the subject that the Spartan, the boys were not taught in school. They were not taught mathematics. They were taught things like uh, wrestling, see it here. They were trained only in fighting, wrestling, throwing of spears and physical exercises. They were trained to be, to be rough and tough, all right? So you see how easily we pick our answers because we already read the questions, all right? That's the beauty, that's the benefit of reading the questions first. However, I'm not insisting that this is the only uh, method. I am only teaching you one of the various reading methods and techniques, you know? You may hear from another teacher that you should read the passage first, you know? But right now you hear from me that you should read the questions first, but you can see that I'm telling you clearly the benefits of reading the questions first. Now, if you discover that it is easier for you to read the passage first, ah, why not read the, the passage first? The important thing is for you to answer the questions correctly, all right? So, but the purpose of this video is to try to uh, impress it, uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, to give you the impression that there is a, a specific way that can simplify the process. And that is reading the questions first and then reading the passage, all right? So, but pick whatever method you think works best for you, all right? Now let's continue, let's uh, read the rest of the passage. The boys who are giving little food, now we want to know. The boys who are little, giving little food as they were taught to steal other people's belongings, quite a queer reason, you all right? But we are severely punished if they were caught. <laughs> this, uh, this appears to be a double standard or if you like, hypocritical. They were given little food and they were taught to steal other people's belongings. But if they were caught stealing, they were severely punished. Why? All right? All right? They were equally taught to show no signs of pain when they were badly hurt. Every Spartan believed strongly that a soldier was meant to be very brave, fearless, and tough. All right? So why? Were they punished severely if they were caught? Then there's no other reason than, you know, if, if they were encouraged to steal 
and if they were caught, they were punished severely. It means that they were, they were punished for being foolish, for being careless. Why did they, why were they not careful enough to steal so smartly that they should successfully steal? They were taught to steal, you know, successfully, which for me, you know, if you ask me, is morally wrong. But that was part of their of their training, all right? And the duty is not to uh, uh, try to preach a sermon here, but to answer uh, uh, to answer comprehension questions, all right? So that is our duty here. Okay, so now we go back to the questions and we already, we have gotten all our answers, all right? So question one, according to the passage, all Spartan boys we are trained to become Great soldiers, you can see that C is actually the answer. Can't you see that? It's quite clear. Do we even need to go back to the passage? No, we don't need to go back to the passage. We already have the answer. They were trained to be great soldiers. However, for the sake of confirmation, we are going back to the passage, all right? So let's go back to the passage. Sparta is a small city. Well, let's just look for the place. All right. The Spartans were well trained to become very strong and tough. Okay, okay, it's here. It's in the first paragraph. Every So the answer is uh, quite clear that every Spartan boy was trained to become a great soldier, not a scientist or any other one. All right. So let's now get to question number two. What happened to all the babies born weak? They were nursed outside the city, no. They were referred to hospital, no. They were trained to survive, no. They were left to die, yes. Now, we already saw this, but let's get back to the passage. You can see here, babies born weak and unhealthy were taken out of the city and left to die. So the evidence is here, and we can easily find it out because we already, you know, we already, uh, identify that by reading the questions first, we had this piece of information already registered in our mind. So as we started reading the passage, even for the very first time, we were looking for this piece of information. Immediately we saw it, we grabbed it. And so it becomes so clear to us that we may not need to come back to the passage, but for the sake of confirmation, we, you know, uh, we've come back to the passage and we've confirmed that babies born weak and unhealthy were left to die, all right? They were not taken to hospital. They were not uh, uh, trained to survive. They were left to die. Question number three, Spartan boys did not study this subject at school. You see, we, we saw it quite clearly. All right, we, we were curiously looking for this particular uh, subject that they were not taught at school. And quite ironically, you know, beyond all, uh, you know, all our expectation, how could anyone have imagined that of all subjects, mathematics was not taught in uh, at school, all right? So, but that's exactly what it, it turned out to be. Now let's again head back to the passage and see that piece of information clearly stated in the passage. Spartan children did not stay long with OK at seven and all that. They stayed there, OK. Let's look at the area of school. Spartan schools were quite different from conventional schools. The boys were not taught mathematics, science, and other subjects study today. <laughs> they were trained only in fighting, wrestling, throwing of spears and physical exercises. They were trained to be rough and tough. 
So that confirms our option, the correct option that we have already chosen. And that of, is option B. Spartan boys did not study this subject at home, and that is mathematics. All the other options were the very subjects, if you like, that they were taught at school. Or who would have even thought that fighting could be a subject or wrestling or spear throwing? But that was what happened uh, at Spartan schools, all right? In those olden days, anyway. Now, question number four. Why were Spartan boys giving little food? Another ironical uh, discovery. Well, to make them agile and strong, no. To make them hungry and weak, no. To make them proud soldiers, no. To make them tough, yes. To make them tough. That could be the only reason. You know, they we are giving little food so that they could go out and look for their own food by themselves. You see, let's head back to the passage and confirm exactly why they were giving little food. Let's look for this, the particular place. Okay, so we can see it here. The boys were given little food as they were taught to steal other people's belongings, but were severely punished if they were caught. You see, again, you see, they were equally taught to show no signs of pain when they were badly hurt. So even if they were hungry, they should not show any sign. They were trained to be tough. That's exactly. And you can see here, every Spartan believes strongly that a soldier was meant to be very brave, fearless, and tough. So the emphasis was on making them tough. And that is actually uh, why uh, we have to pick option D, to make them tough. Why were Spartan boys giving little food? To make them tough. Even when they suffered pain, they were asked not to show signs of, you know, signs of uh, being uh, you know, in pain. They were expected to be tough, brave. Then question number five, why were Spartan boys severely punished when caught stealing? All right, A, because stealing was a sin, no. We already discovered that it wasn't that. Because they were well fed, no, they were even, uh, on the contrary, giving little food. See, because they were not hungry, of course they, they could be hungry, uh, D, because they were not careful. Yes, if they were caught stealing, they were severely punished. Yet they were actually expected to steal. So what could be the reason? If you, if you, are, if you are encouraged to steal, but when you, you are caught, you are severely, severely punished. The only reason is that, you know, you were too careless to allow yourself to be caught. So option D, because they were not careful. So this brings us to the end. If you look at this, you will see exactly. This is Lego State uh, Basic Education Certificate Examination 2020 English Studies Objective Test. Uh, I want you to open to the page. 2020, page one, you will find it, all right? And so we are starting with the comprehension. Uh, but before we do that, I will like to discuss certain principles briefly, all right? How to answer comprehension questions in this exam. Uh, we, we want to examine the key steps that you need to take. Now, step number one is to read the questions first. Now, reading the questions first will help you to have an overview of what the passage is about, even before reading it. I'm going to show you practically the benefits of reading the questions first. It will also help you to know what to look for when you start reading the passage. This enables you to read with a purpose 
you can now scan for the answers right away. It facilitates understanding and saves time, all right? That's the benefit. Now, step number two is to read the passage carefully and make sure you understand what it is all about. Now, when you read for understanding and read with a purpose, all right? Then you read with the intention of identifying the key ideas required for answering the questions. We are going to uh, put these principles in practice as we begin to read and to solve the comprehension questions. Now, step number three is to go back to the questions and take them one by one. All right, step number four is to scan the passage for the answer to each question, just as simple as that. Now, in scanning, of course, you know what scanning is about. When pregnant women uh, go for a scan, they are looking for a specific piece of information concerning the, 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 the child in their womb or you know, the situation of their pregnancy. Now, scanning is a reading technique that enables you to search specifically for a particular piece of information. And the importance of scanning is that when you are looking, when you already know what you are looking for, then the search becomes simple. For example, if you are asked to go into a room and pick a purse or to pick a particular book, for example, and when you get into the room, you forget exactly what you were asked to look for. Then it makes no sense to continue to search for what you don't know because you, you may search for the whole day or even weeks, and yet you won't be able to find because you don't know what you are looking for. So. If once you have read the questions first and you know already what you are looking for, then as you read, you scan for the answers. And how do you scan for the answers? You look for the keywords, all right? You look for the keywords. That's just exactly what it is. You look for the keywords. Keywords are the things that actually help you to uh, identify the answers. Now, these keywords are called context clues. The keywords becomes the context clues. Now, context clues are those keywords that, you know, give you an idea of, you know, what the answer to the question uh, is. And we are going to look at all these as we uh, get into answering the questions. So it's time to really go into the questions. Now you can see this is the passage, the instruction, read the questions, uh, read the passage, all right? This is a typo, actually. Uh, this is a typo because what is meant here is the passage. Okay, so that is exactly what it is, all right? Read the passage carefully and answer the questions that follow. That is exactly uh, what it is. But as already explained in the steps, we are going to begin with reading the questions. So let's go straight to the questions and read through the questions. Now, question number one, why was Ngembele's country not recognized? Now, what this question one already shows us is that this passage is about someone called Ngembele and about his country. And then we already 
uh, have the idea that Ngembele's country was not recognized. So as we read the passage, we want to find out why Ngembele's country was not recognized. So we already have some information about the passage even before we start reading. Then question number two, it was easy for Ngembele to get adopted as, so again, this question number two gives us the idea that Ngembele was adopted. He was adopted. And so that is another important piece of information we are going to look for. Why was he adopt? Why was it easy for him to be adopted? We are going to look for it as we read the passage. Then question number three, what made it easier for Ngembele to run than to walk? Now, this is another revealed fact about the passage that Ngembele found it easier to run than to walk. And we are going to look for what actually made it easier for him to run than to walk. Question number four, which phrase tells you that the Olympics was not held in Africa? Again, this question number four introduces a new piece of information. Here we find out that the passage also has something to do with the Olympics and that the Olympics was not held in Africa. And we are going to find the phrase that tells us that the Olympics was not held in Africa. Then question number five, the stadium broke into thunderous applauses when Ngembele came in, uh, you all right? Either third, second, first, or last, we are going to look for this. But of course, the fact that the stadium broke into thunderous applauses already gives us you know, the clue that he must have come either first or at least second or third, but certainly not last because people don't clap or applaud someone uh, who came last. People jeer someone who came last, but even in such a competition, you don't find people jeering at uh, 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 competitors, all right? So this is exactly why it is important to read the questions first. You can see that by reading the questions first, we already know a lot about the passage, even when we have not read a single line, all right? Now it's time for us to head to the passage and begin to read. Having already the questions we read in mind, now let's begin to read, all right? Paragraph one, he came from an unknown country, though not to the extent that the country was not listed or recognized by others, rather a country that had not been known to produce any Olympic medalist before, unlike America or China where gold medalists seem to be mass produced on daily basis. Remember, we came across a question, you know, as to, uh, as to why Ngembele's country was not recognized, all right? So, and here we discover that it, the country was not recognized because it had not been known, all right? It had not been known to produce any Olympic medalist before, all right? So that, uh, of course, gives us a clue to, you know, the answer. Now let's go to uh, paragraph two. Ngembele was poor. He came from a small village in one of the deepest jungles in Africa, but had made his way to civilization, mainly through his sheer curiosity and determination. Ngembele started his journey, uh, all right, so now uh, paragraph three. Ngembele started his journey 
out of his village by simply running. He ran away from the comfort of his heart just to find out how it would feel like if he were to have no home. He soon found out that he had got lost and had to live on wild berries and rainwater while trying to avoid being preyed upon by larger animals. How he managed to survive those sinister African jungle nights, no one knew, but he soon ran his way out of the jungle where he was promptly taken in as an adopted child to a certain family named Akonkwa, who could not resist the doe-eyed and chubby-cheeked boy of eight. So you remember we came across a question uh, which uh, is why it was easy for Ngembele to get adopted, you know? And here we can, when we read the word adopted, you know, promptly, you know, he was promptly adopted, which means he was promptly taken in as an adopted child. Promptly here means easily, all right? To a certain family named Akonkwa. Now why? They could not resist the doe-eyed, the doe-eyed and chubby-cheeked boy of eight. So you see, this place gives us a clue as to, you know, the, the, the answer to that question. So you can see that because we read the questions first, uh, as we begin to read the passage, then our mind flashes back to the question. So it helps you to manage time. It helps you to save time, all right? Because you are now reading with a purpose and you are now uh, using the scanning uh, technique of reading in order to facilitate and speed up your reading process, all right? Now let's go to the next page uh, and read the remaining. Now, Ngembele was thankful for it was an orphan to begin with, and since no one in his, in his native village would miss him, he settled into the Akonkwo family. He soon found out that he must outsmart, outlearn, and outrun boys in his family. Okay. They were full of mischief, and the only way not to get mad was to get even. He soon found himself always running from his brothers when they turned into bullies to the, rind, to the dining table to get his own share of the food to his adopted parents for help when things get out of hand. Ngembele soon realized that it was easier for him to run than to walk. Now, you see, this gives us a clue because we already came across a question uh, about, you know, uh, what made him, uh, you know, what made it easier for him to run than to walk? So now that we have come across this, uh, we expect that the answer will follow. His physical self was perfect for it, tall and lanky with strong muscular lips. It's, it saved him time too, all right? So, we can see now why it was easier for Ngembele to run than to walk. His physical self was perfect for it, all right? Okay, so let's now continue the reading. Uh, okay, it saved he, his time too. Thus, he stopped uh, walking. In, in school, his natural talent for running attracted the attention of Mr. John White, an athletics coach, and he began running for the school's athletic team and ran his way up to the national level. 
Okay, the next paragraph. Four years later, he found himself on a running track halfway across the world in a foreign land. Uh, we, are, we came across uh, where we were asked to look for a phrase, all right, which shows that the, uh, the Olympics did not take place in Africa. Well, you see, uh, Ngembele found himself running on a track halfway across the world. This is a pointer to the fact that where the Olympics took place was, you know, across, uh, halfway across the world. And don't forget that Ngembele was native to one of the deepest uh, jungles in Africa. And if the Olympics, if where he found himself running, uh, uh, on a running track was halfway across the world in a foreign land, then certainly that gives us a clue that the Olympics did not take place in Africa. Still, when the gun was shot, he just ran. He ran to the finishing line and broke the white ribbon. The stadium broke into thunderous cheer. Now you see that there was a question also as to, you know, uh, why, uh, what happened, for example, when the stadium broke into thunderous uh, uh, chair, all right? But then we, we can see that uh, something had already given us a clue to the fact that he came first. You can see that he ran to the finishing line. He ran to the finishing line and broke the white ribbon. Now, normally in a race, especially at the Olympics and any other uh, standard athletics comp competition, the, you have a white ribbon, you know, that is placed at the finishing line. The person who comes first is the person who will break uh, this white ribbon because as he as he runs across, as he runs past the white ribbon, and that right, fight, uh, white ribbon is always is it, not made uh, to be very strong. So as the first person runs into it, it breaks, and that signals that that person uh, has come first. You know the person you know, touches the white ribbon and, and breaks it, all right? Okay, so uh, these are the clues, and this gives us exactly insight into how to pick the, uh, the answers, all right? So now let's go back to the questions, and then we, we read the question, and then we go back and confirm. Now, one thing you must uh, take particular note of in answering comprehension questions is that you need to look for the evidence in the passage. This is very important. Do not pick any option just because you feel uh, you have a good feeling about that option. No, it's not a thing of, of gamble. You don't gamble to pick the answers. You look for the evidence in the passage. And I'm going to show you how to look for the evidence. Already I gave you uh, an idea of how you can use the context clues, all right, to look for the evidence. Now, answers to comprehension questions are evidence-based. You must, you must find the evidence in the passage. Now, let's look at question number one. Why was Ngembele's country not recognized? Well, let's get back to the passage. Let's get back to the passage. And then we see. 
Now, he came, look at, he came from an unknown country. Now, not recognized, unknown. So certain keywords in a passage give you a clue. And when you come across those keywords, then you become, uh, you become conscious of the fact that you are close, you know, you are very close to locating or identifying the exact uh, answer, all right? He came from an unknown country, though not to the extent that the country was not listed or recognized by others, all right? That was not actually the reason. Now, the next uh, sentence gives us the exact reason. Rather, a country that had not been known, that had not been known to produce any Olympic medalist before. Now, this it gives us a, a clue to the answer. Now, let's go back to the options. You see, we can now beat our chest and say, well, we know that Ngembele's country was not recognized because it was not known to produce any Olympic medalist before. It, it was not a country uh, recognized as a, an Olympic, uh, uh, as a producer of Olympic medalists like America or China. Now let's go back to the options. First of all, the question again, why was Ngembele's country not recognized? A, it had never produced any Olympic medalists before. That is the answer. Now all other options are just traps, all right, to distract you from the, the real, the, the correct answer. Now B, it was never listed formally as a country. Already we saw that that was not the reason. It was not that it wasn't recognized by as a country. That was not the issue. Then C, it was not a big country to begin with. We were not told uh, that it was not recognized because of its size, certainly not. Then D, it was not famous. That also uh, was not the issue. The issue, as we saw in the passage, has to do with the fact that Ngembele's country had never produced any Olympic medalist before. Now, we, we saw the evidence in the passage, and that is why we have chosen the option here. Now, question number two, it was easy for Ngembele to get adopted. Now you see, let's look through the options. Uh, as he was already an orphan, was that the reason? Mm, certainly not. B, as he looked really cute, I think this is close to it. We saw something, one thing that uh, uh, actually attracted the Akonkwa family to the, the boy of eight. He looked uh, handsome, all right? We saw some uh, clues to that. And as we, when we get back to the passage, we will confirm it because we must see the evidence before we actually pick the option. See, the Akonkwa family had no son. This is absolutely not correct. Uh, now, another method I want you to use when answering uh, questions like this is what I call the elimination method. Now, what does the elimination method mean and how does it help you? Elimination method. Now, the elimination method has to do with eliminating the irrelevant answers, the, uh, I mean the irre irrelevant options, the options that are you know, absolutely uh, incorrect. We, by just reading the option, we know it, is, it has no bearing, it has no connection with the passage. So we eliminate it immediately. Using the elimination method, 
can help us to arrive at the answer, even when we are a little bit in doubt. All right, we use the elimination method. For example, the Akonkwo family had no son. This is not correct because uh, we read something about uh, his brothers who turned themselves into bullies. So it was not that they didn't have uh, sons. Now, D, no one from his native village would miss him. We know that, that this piece of information is correct uh, uh, about the passage, but that was not given as a direct reason uh, for his being promptly adopted by the Akonkwo family. All right, that was really uh, not the immediate reason. Okay, so we are likely going for option B. He looked really cute, but before we conclude, uh, we have to head back to the passage and confirm by looking at the evidence, all right? So obviously our part of call here is uh, paragraph three. Ngembele started his journey out of his village by simply running. He ran away from the comfort of his heart just to find out how it would feel like if he were to have no home. He soon found out that he had got lost and had to live on wild berries and rainwater while trying to avoid being preyed upon by larger animals. How he managed to survive those sinister African jungle nights, no one knew, but he soon ran his way out of the jungle where he was promptly taken in as an adopted child. So you can see key words that you know, serve as context clues, you know, uh, promptly taken in as an adopted child. Why? Okay, to a certain family named Akonkwo. Now, why did they adopt him? Now, who could not resist, you see why? Who could not resist the doe-eyed uh, and chubby-cheeked boy of eight? Now, someone who is doe-eyed, uh, has uh, large eyes that look innocent and all right. Uh, and someone who is chubby cheeked has, a, has well rounded cheeks, you know, that, uh, you know, actually presents that boy as someone who is fat in a pleasant manner. So it is all about his being cute. He's being handsome. So this family saw him and admired him and adopted him, all right? So that actually is why he was easily adopted, all right? Now, let's now get back to the question. And it is now time for us to confirm that, you know, it was easy for Ngembele to get adopted, you know, as he looked really cute. We just confirmed that from the passage, all right? Now, question number three, what made it easier for Ngembele to run than to walk? Option A, he had run from the jungle. Certainly no, we can eliminate this. He attracted the attention of the coach. Certainly not. That was not what made it easier for him for him to run than to walk. C, he was physically suited for running. Uh, we came across the, a context clue that seemed to confirm that this is the answer, but we will uh, get back to the passage and be sure, all right? Option D, he had to run away from his siblings all the time. Yes, this is true of the passage, but uh, we were not told that that was a, the immediate uh, reason why uh, he found it easier to run than to walk. That could have been one of the remote causes, but uh, we shall confirm from the passage the immediate reason uh, or the immediate factor that made it easier 
from Gembele to run than to walk. So let's now head back to the passage, all right? And so we have to use the scanning methods. And so we can see that it is this very paragraph that we will find it. Ngembele soon realized that it was easier for him to run than to walk. You see the contest clue. Now, the contest clue is the key word in the question. The question said, what made it easier for Ngembele to run than to walk? So when we come across run than to walk or easier for him to run than to walk, then we, we see that this is a contest clue. A clue is something that suggests that something else is true, all right? So that is exactly what a clue. So a contest clue is a key word or a key expression that we find in the question, which we find in the passage, suggesting that we are coming closer to the answer, all right? Now let's look at the, uh, the, the next sentence is likely to give us the answer as to what made it easier for him to run than to walk. Now let's read it. His physical self was perfect for it, all right? So that gives us exactly the factor that made it easier for him to run than to walk. And so at this point, we can you know, be sure that that option that we looked at you know, is actually correct because we have seen the evidence in the passage. Now let's go back to the question, all right? And that is question number three. What made it easier for Ngembele to run than to walk? Obviously, we can see that it is option C. He was physically suited for running. That's exactly what we find. All right. So now let's get to question four. Which phrase tells you that the Olympics was not held in Africa? All right. Let's look for the phrase. Option A, stadium broke into Tondoro's chair. No. B, ran his way up to the national level. No, that was not really, uh, that, that is not a phrase that tells us that the Olympics was not held in Africa. C, a pair of eyes would follow. No. D, halfway across the world. Yes, this exactly we have seen. Now, when something is halfway, this is an idiomatic expression. Now, halfway across the world tells us of a very far distance, something that is far, so far away from where you live and is talking about another part of the world, probably a different continent, all right? So, that actually is the phrase that gives us, uh, a, a, that tells you that the Olympics was not held in Africa. And in, let's get back to confirm from the passage, all right? Okay. Okay, so uh, it is this last paragraph. Four years later, he found himself on a running track halfway across the world in a foreign land, all right? Halfway across the world in a foreign land. So that gives us a clue to, that tells us that the Olympics did not, uh, was not held in Africa. All right, that's the only clue. All the other ones, we are not pointing to 
a distance or location. But this is the only phrase that gives us some idea about the geographical uh, location of the Olympics for that year in relation to his native uh, village in uh, one of the deepest jungles in Africa, all right? Now, so let's now take the last question, which is question number five. The stadium broke into thunderous applauses when Ngembele came in, option A, third, certainly no, B, second, no, C, first, is likely. We already saw a, a clue, but let's get back to the passage to confirm, all right? So here we can look at what happened reading exactly from this place. Still, when, he, when the, the gun was shot, he just ran. He ran to the finishing line and broke the white ribbon, all right? The stadium broke into thunderous cheer, all right? Now, Naturally, you know, the, 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 the spectators in a stadium cheer someone who has actually won. And we also find another clue that he ran to the finishing line and broke the white ribbon. Usually, if you are familiar with how you know, the athletic competitions such as the race uh, happen, you understand that the, the person who breaks the white ribbon uh, is the one who uh, arrives at the finishing line first, all right? So that's exactly the way it is. In some cases, they use a tape and the first person comes in and breaks the tape and the tape falls off. The ribbon uh, breaks because this is the first person that comes in contact with the white ribbon. And that is a sign that he came first in that, come in that race, all right? So having seen the, the evidence, then we can actually uh, beat our chest and conclude that option C is correct. The stadium broke into thunderous applauses when Ngembele came in first. All right, so this is exactly uh, how to answer questions, uh, comprehension questions, questions, all right. Well, let me bring this down. Lagos State Basic Education Certificate Examination 2021, English Studies Objective Test. All right. And so here you have it. And so let's now start with the comprehension. You are asked to read the questions carefully and answer the questions that follow. All right. Now, as I have always explained in reading comprehension, eh, to simplify it, you can just go through the questions, all right? And look at question number one, what disturbed the quietness of Ilufela, all right? Then the second question, the name of the village is, Question number three, how many items did Kola bring for his in-laws? Question number four, why was the bride's mother absent? She was absent because, of course, this question you can see uh, is a typo here uh, because the bride's mother was really present. If the question is what, why was the groom's mother absent? So that is actually uh, the appropriate question. Number five, how many biological parents of Kola were at the wedding? Now, this gives us an idea. Even before reading the passage, we already know 
that this is about a marriage ceremony or a wedding, if you like. And then questions are about, you know, the bride and the bridegroom's uh, relations and all that. Now let's read the passage uh, now that we have gone through the questions. Okay. The instruction is read the questions carefully and answer, uh, I mean, read the passage. This, this actually is the passage, all right? So, read the passage carefully and answer the questions that follow. That is exactly the right thing. Now, the quietness of Ilufela was disturbed when Kola, with some relatives and friends, came to seek for the hand of Ninola in marriage. Not all the people of Ilufela knew what was going on as the celebration was a low-key one. Kola brought all his... Uh, brought all his proposed in-law requested from him. Kola in his bid to show that he was one of the great farmers in his town brought big tubas of yam. Each of the tubas would require 20 hefty men to carry. This marveled his in-laws and some guests who were meeting Kola for the first time. The bride's father blessed the couple the bride's mother was dressed in the same blue lace attire with her husband, uh, with her husband. Uh, okay, the bride's mother, there should be a comma here, all right, who was dressed in the same blue uh, lace attire with her husband, then another comma, rose and did the same. Tears started rolling down her cheeks before she finished the, uh, before she finished blessing them. That was an emotional period there. The master of the ceremony asked them to proceed to the tent of the groom's family, where a slim, tall man rose to offer his blessing. He was Kola's uncle. He stood in for Kola's uh, late father. Kola's mother, too, was so old that she could not be present at the occasion. She was represented by her young sister, who was also fairly old. She poured avalanche of blessings on the husband and wife-to-be. So we can see the clear picture of, you know, the, what the passage is about. Now we can proceed to answer questions. At this junior school certificate level, the, the questions are simple, and most of the questions are factual questions. If you check other videos we uploaded on, on how to answer comprehension questions in the senior school certificate examination, you will also find that there are different types of comprehension questions, but those uh, other various types of compression questions relate, uh, relate or are more relevant to the senior uh, level. However, when we go through the questions, then we will also analyze the various types of compression questions that we find at this level. So let's go now straight to the questions and attempt to solve them. Now, the first one is. What disturbed the quietness of Ilufela? Now let's go through the options, then I will tell you exactly what you must do. Option A, the blessing of sheep and goats. You see, with the elimination method, we eliminate this because there was no mention of sheep and goats in the passage at all. So we eliminate it immediately. B, the singing birds, again, no mention of singing birds in the passage, so we eliminate it. So now one method I have already mentioned here is the elimination method. Eliminate options that are not related to the passage at all. 
all right, you must eliminate them because the options are included to divert your attention. So you must eliminate them. Excuse me. Now option C, the sound made by the host and the guests. Now, of course, we, the hosts are the people who are organizing the, the, the occasion, the ceremony, and the guests are people who arrived from their various places, all right? So, of course, it is the sound made up by the host and the guests that, of course, disturb the quietness of Ilufela. Now, option D, the running up and down of children. Again, we eliminate this because it was not mentioned in the passage. Now, one thing I must say at this point is that you must ensure that you have evidence for your answer. Now, you can see to find evidence, you need the context clue. Well, again, let me take you back to the question and show you what I mean by the context clue. Now, the context clue is the keywords here, disturbed, the quietness of a Lufela. Now, this, these are the keywords that we will be looking for in the passage. These keywords in the question will be used as context clue. What we mean by context clue is something that will show us that we are getting closer to where the question, uh, the answer to the question in the passage is located, all right? So these keywords will serve as context clue and will help us to locate the answer in the passage. Disturb, disturbed the quietness of a little fella. So armed with the keywords, let's now go to the passage so that when we find these keywords, then we analyze the information we have here. And you can see, you know, we have it even in the very first sentence here. The quietness of Ilufe, Ilufela was disturbed. All right, you see, this, these are the keywords, and this provide us the context clue. So this is where the answer is located. So once you, you capture the context clue, then you get back to the passage, and when you find those keywords, then you look up the information that will provide the exact answer to the question. Now let's look for the answer. Now, the quietness of Ilufela was disturbed. By what? When Kola with some relatives and friends came to seek for the hand of Ninola in marriage. Not all the people of Ilufela knew what was going on as the celebration was a low key one. Kola brought all his proposed in-law requested from him. All right, so we can see that it, this is a ceremony, this is an event, and where you have an event, you have the host and you have the guest. So this is a combination of a factual question and also an inferential question. We need some background knowledge because here you, the background knowledge has to do with who is a host and who is a guest and who are these people when you have an occasion. The hosts are the people who are part of the, the family or the place where the event is organized. They are the people who, they are the organizers. They are the people who welcome the guests. The guests are strangers, people who are coming from outside. Kola and his people are the guests. And then Ninola's parents and their relatives and friends are the are uh, the hosts, okay? So this actually has given us the answer to the question. And so we can beat our chest that the right option is C, okay? The sound made by the hosts and the guests. 
Now, question number two. The name of the village is already, we, we already know that the, the name of the village is Ilufela. We have seen it there. And if we get back to the passage, we, we find it. So always look for evidence. The quietness of Ilufela, so you can see that this is the name of the village. The quietness of Ilufela, that's the name of the village. Now, one thing I must mention is that, you know, um, answering comprehension question has to do with evidence. It is evidence-based. It is what? Evidence-based. That means you have to find the evidence in the passage. You don't have to bring any strange ideas in your head from anywhere. Your answers are within the passage. And even when the answers are not explicitly stated, they are implied. And so you look for the answer in the passage. So answering a comprehension question requires evidence from the passage. Don't just assume, look for the evidence in the passage. So we have seen Ilufela, that's the evidence that our answer is correct. Okay, so we now go back to the question and now we can beat our chest that option A is the answer, Ilufela. Ibadan, Ibadan was not mentioned. Ilugaran was not mentioned. Kola is not the name of a village, is the bridegroom, all right? Now, question number three. How many items did Kola, uh, well, let's restore order here, okay? So, how many items did Kola bring for his in-laws? A, Yam only, B, Cassava only, C, Yam and Cassava, D, many items. Of course, many items is the answer. How do we know? You know, uh, let's go back to the passage again, and I will show you that this is evidence-based. Even though many items were not mentioned in the, specifically in the passage, yet we can infer, we can decipher, we can figure out the information from the available information already in the passage. So let's get back and see the information about what Kola brought to the uh, to his in-laws house. Now, again, let me show you how to use the contest clue. How many items did Kola bring for his in-laws? So Kola bringing, you know, what Kola br brought for his in-laws, that these are the key ways, Kola bringing you know, items or things for his in-law. Those are the context clue. The, are the key words you have to look for in the passage. So let's now go back to the passage. And when we look at what color, uh, anywhere we find some, that color brought something, we'll be looking for the information. And we can see that in line three here. One, two, three. So you can see it here. Kola brought all his proposed in-law requested from him. All here means there are more than one items. All, he brought all, which means the in-law the in-law requested many things and Kola brought all. The mention made of two bars of yam was just to draw attention to the big size of the tubers, all right? But yam was not the only item that Kola brought, only that, you know, yam became a very extraordinary item among others that Kola brought, all right? So we can now uh, go back to the question and we can beat our chest, uh, you know, that the option we have picked is correct. It is many items. 
Now we can eliminate all this one because now we know it's not yam only. Cassava was not even mentioned and it cannot be yam and cassava because cassava is out of it. So many items is the correct answer. So with this, uh, you will understand how to answer questions like this. Now let's go uh, ahead and solve question four. Why was the bride's mother absent? Now I told you this is a typo. We know from the passage that the bride's mother was present, both the father and the mother, they were all there. All right, so let me type instead of, all right. Well, let me type it here. Okay. Why was the groom's mother absent? She was absent because, all right. Now, let's look at the options. A, she couldn't cook food. We eliminate this because we didn't find anything like, you know, she didn't come because she couldn't cook food. Such information is not in the passage, so we just eliminate it. She would miss the absence of her daughter. No, we cancel it. Now, she hated the family of the husband. <laughs> this is ridiculous, so we eliminate it. She was old, obviously. That's the answer. But we, we shouldn't just assume. Again, I told you that answering comprehension questions requires getting the evidence from the passage. It is evidence-based. So let's now go, and what are we looking for? The clue that we are looking for is the groom's mother. Why was the groom's mother absent? So we are looking at the groom's mother's absence. She was absent because she couldn't attend the, the marriage because these are the, the, the key words. All right, so always look for the key words in the question and then use those key words as context clues as you, you scan the, the passage for answers. Okay, so here we can see that both the, the bride's father and the bride's mother were present here, all right? But then let's look at... Uh, the groom from here, okay? The master of the ceremony asked them to proceed to the tent of the groom's uncle. That is the, the bride and the bridegroom. After they had been blessed by the parents, they were asked to go now to sit with their people, all right? Now let's now look at information about how uh, uh, Kola's people attended the occasion. Now we see here that, uh, uh, okay, where a slim tall man rose to offer his blessing, all right? He was Kola's uncle, why? He stood in for Kola's late father. Here we learn that Kola's father couldn't attend because already he was dead. Now, Kola's mother, too, was so old that she could not be present at the occasion. So it is the groom's mother that was absent, not the bride's mother, all right? The bride's mother attended and, in fact, wore the same blue lace that the husband wore. And she also blessed the couple as the, as the husband did. So we are looking at the groom's mother who was absent. And the reason is clear because she was so old that she could not be present. So you can see at the occasion. So we can beat our, te our chest because we have seen the evidence. So I want you to understand how to look for the evidence. And that is exactly what you should always do when you are giving a comprehension passage. You go through the questions, then you go through the passage, and as you begin to answer the solve the questions, you always shuttle between the question and the passage, and all, you always look for the keywords in the in a particular question 
use those keywords as clue, as context clues, all right, to look for the evidence in the passage. So what do we find here? Option B is correct. The groom's mother couldn't attend because she was absent because she was old. All right, so question number five, how many biological parents of Kola were at the wedding? Of course, we have gone through, we saw that the father didn't attend, the mother didn't attend. So, uh, you know, the answer is none of the parents, all right? The mother wasn't there, so we eliminate this. The father wasn't there, so we eliminate this. Both parents were not there, so we eliminate this. The answer is A, none of the parents, uh, you know, was at the wedding. So this is how to answer the comprehension questions, which in, uh, incidentally are objective questions as well in the junior school certificate examination or basic education certificate examination. Many thanks for watching today's video. A big thank you to all of you out there for being part of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, kindly subscribe to this channel. Subscribe now as a way of giving us support. For notification about new videos, click on the bell icon. You will find the bell icon click on it so that whenever a new video is uploaded you will be instantly notified if you have actually enjoyed the video like and share the video with your friends and relatives this is very important if you have any comments leave your comments below any questions any suggestions we would gladly receive them and positively to them see you in the next video i look forward to always see you 